Howdy folks, it's Diecast both of here again, and welcome back to the NASCAR Thunder 2004 Career Mode Season 2. Wow, what an amazing night at Daytona. So the first stock car race of the year, non-points paying race, but man does it pay $200,000. We got the victory in the Bud Shootout, look at that. Our first win, man, first win, standings, no points, nothing, but hey, we, we went to Daytona and man, we... We, we earned it. We have earned it, so a uh, huge accomplishment. So happy about that. So happy about it, and our resume for 2004 is a clean slate, ready to get this season started. Last year, we only got, we had four polls last year, which is actually pretty good, to be honest. That's pretty darn good. Uh, one top five, one top ten, an average start of 25.4, and a 36.8 average finish. Our best finish was third at that Phoenix race, but hey, it's a brand new season. Oh, man. And uh, last year's champion. Who was the champion? Wasn't it uh, Stewart, I think? Let's see. Yes, Tony Stewart was the champion last year. Jesus Christ. 29 top 10s, 23 top 5s. What an amazing year out of that Home Depot Pontiac. So it's time for the Daytona 500 sponsorship. Um, I don't think it affects any of that, their happiness or anything, because it was a non-points paying event, just like the All-Star. Um... Let's check our shop edition. So yeah, it does. It, none of that counts. The only thing that counted was the two hundred thousand dollars. I don't think any of our okay, our power didn't go down or nothing. So that's really good. So basically, it's like a free race. None of your um, equipment gets hurt. So that's really good. Oh boy, we really have to nail Daytona, man. This is this is it, guys. If we want to be a competing car in two thousand and four, and honestly two thousand and five, it depends on this race. If we can go out there and get a top 10, we could bring home four to $500,000. That's what I'm saying. Like We could bring home a pile of money, and we can invest that straight back into this car. So this, this is it. This is our Super Bowl of stock car racing. We're going to bring the absolute best equipment we have. I, wish, I really wish we would have got a better car set up for this year, but hey, you know, we're digging. We're trying to build a team. You know, Got to start somewhere. Let's go back down to Daytona. All right, guys. So we have got the poll here at Daytona for the Daytona 500. Uh, I cannot believe it, guys. We we're faster than every other car in the field. So we have a front row starting spot for the Daytona 500. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. So we're not going to take any chances of tearing up this race car. We're going to just uh, go in the, the, the dual race, learn a little bit about our race car, and get ready. But I'm not going to take any unnecessary risks. I would not be, I wouldn't, you know, feel bad running in the back of the field, honestly. So let's go ahead and head down to the Gatorade 125. Gatorade 125 is determined the starting positions for the Daytona 500. The first race will determine the inside row, and the second race will determine the outside row. Front row for the Daytona 500 is based off of qualifying time alone, not the Gatorade 125s. Let's see so we are starting first in, the front row in duel number one. We outran uh, Sterling Marlin for uh, for the pole. I just can't believe it, guys. Two in the second row what one hundred faster Ford and the M and M's Ford. That's crazy. That is crazy. Race from row three are we have US real Army speed. Now look at Tony Stewart's Daytona 500 car. That is pretty cool. Well, Bert, Ward Burton's uh, running a really cool paint scheme, too. Home Depot Chevrolet Some defi uh, definite, really interesting designs here for the Super Bowl of stock car racing. Here we go for the Gatorade 125. A five lap dash. Let's go out here and let's just try to have a good run. Again, we don't want to tear up the race car, we just want to have a good run. Um, if, if things get too hairy, I'm just gonna just let them go. You know, I'm not, I'm not in no um, big predicament to try to win this. I just want to take care of our stuff. Don't, you know, don't get greedy. Just gonna try to block the inside as much as I can. Learn a little bit about our race car too. How is this car handling in the draft? How is our car gonna be on Sunday? You know, we have to know these things so when it gets down to it, we know how. How much we can push our car through traffic? How how well is it blocking? This is information that we can use into tuning our race car for the Daytona 500. 
which line's the, going to be the you know the fastest line of the race. Because sometimes the inside line isn't always the fastest. I've seen the outside be the top dog. They're going to lead the first lap here. Just I really want to focus on learning about our race car. I don't want to tear it up. Dale Jarrett is definitely a player in the 500, I'll tell you that. Dale Jarrett, Sterling Marlin, both are going to be players in the Daytona 500. We need to, you know, watch them. I don't want to do anything unnecessary to the race car. Just take care of it, learn a little bit about it. Just, you know, just take care of your equipment, man, you know? That's just all you got to do. This, uh... Western Auto, Sintas, Easy Care, Monte Carlo has got a lot of speed. And I don't want to take any chances. There we go. Trying to block these runs. You know, this is something that Dell Jr. did in the 2004 or 2014 day 25, rather. He was, uh, I mean, just amazing at blocking runs. Man. he would just come up just a feet in front of another car and block them. And that's how he won that night. He was so spot on with blocking and how to cut people's runs off. That's what I'm wanting to focus on right now. Like I said, if we get past, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna drag the brakes and I'm gonna let them go by. But if I'm out front, I'm out front. Clean air is the best medicine for any stock car. But if they're gonna be around me, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the apron because I don't want to take any unnecessary risks in damaging the equipment. So I don't know if it stacks or not. I don't know. I don't want to take any risks, even if it doesn't. I don't want to get out here and just damage the equipment for no reason. I want to have some confidence heading to the 500. Lap 4 out of 5 in the Gatorade 125. Our car's got really good speed, man. I'm telling you, clean air. This thing is not a pusher. This is not a drafter. This is not a car that goes through the field and just, you know, cuts and bobbles. It just doesn't have that speed. But, man, let me tell you, clean air is really good. Tony Stewart, oh, God! Car got really loose there. Tony Stewart blowing the engine in the 125. That is going to kill, absolutely kill his uh, qualifying position because Sterling Marlin had second. So it means he doesn't have that guaranteed front row starting spot. So he is going to be in the back of the field come Sunday for the Super Bowl in stock car racing world. Here we are coming to the white flag. It's 82 Monte Carlo. I'm telling you guys, has some speed, but. Can we hold off Kevin Harvick and company to win this? Come on, come on, come on. This is, this is important. I want to make sure that we have a good car for Sunday. So this is invaluable information we can learn about how we're going to build a block runs come Sunday. Block that run on the outside. Got to block the run on the inside. We go. Dale Jarrett's going to try to go down there. He's going to be left out to dry. Going to have to wash back up and back up for another run. Three, three, and four. Oh no. Oh, sorry. My game started lagging, guys. My game started lagging. Oh. My game started lagging, so I paused it there, guys. Oh, car's extremely loose. Off turns four. We're going to win the second race this week. Garrett Hodge back to victory lane. Yes. Awesome. Another win of Speed Weeks, baby. There we go. There we go. Woo! Awesome job. Another win. Man, we are... This car is one of the fastest cars of Speed Weeks, guys. We are doing amazing. Wow, guys. Wow. Ain't that awesome. A very clean race. We didn't earn any money. We didn't lose anything, you know? We went out there. We did what we had to. We took care of the equipment. We won the race. It's all that matters, guys. It all that matters. We won the Gatorade 25... I can't believe it, guys. We have won the Bud, Bud Shootout. We have won the poll for the 500, and we won the Gatorade 125. I don't know about you, but it is looking like we have we have built one of the fastest cars this weekend in Speed Weeks. And we're running off a 63 power engine. The reason this car is so fast is because of the setup that I have built on this Monte Carlo. I, I cannot believe it, guys. I cannot believe it. Oh my goodness, guys. So, wow. I cannot believe it. So we're going to be starting on the front row for the Daytona 500. We're going to be starting first. It is going to get nuts on Sunday. Everything's on the line. The 500's on the line. And Tony Stewart is going to be starting dead last, along with Bobby Labonte. So Joe Gibbs Racing uh, is going to be starting 42nd and 43rd in this 500. 
horrible day for Joe Gibbs Racing. Let's sit it down trackside for the Super Bowl of the Stock Car Racing Universe. The Great American Race, the Daytona 500. Well, here we are at the Great American Race, the Daytona 500, the NASCAR Winston Cup Series premier event. This is Joe Moore, and I'm with Barney Hall to bring you live flag-to-flag -flag coverage on MRN. To win a race is something pretty special at any track, but to win here at Daytona, you're that much closer to becoming a legend in the sport. The list of former winners here is very prestigious indeed. Who wouldn't want their name to be on it? Who knows, maybe we'll add another lucky driver when this one's all over. Casey Mears brings another well-known racing name to NASCAR. Well, he brings Ganassi some trying to get a 500 also, victory. Having an uncle with Indy win certainly doesn't hurt your chances of getting a ride. After finishing second twice to Dale Earnhardt Jr. for the Bush Series Championship, Kenseth beat him out for Rookie of the Year in 2000. And he did it without qualifying well. Despite only two top 10 starting spots, he posted a 14th place points finish and a win and 11 top 10s. Engines are fired here at Daytona, guys. Oh, man. It is going to get crazy. The results from last year's 500, the 2003 one. Dale Jarrett won this race, and we finished 23rd. Here we go. Green flag in the 2004 running of the Great American Race. Oh, boy. This is it. This is the Daytona 500, the biggest race of the year. The payout for this race, if you win it, is over a million dollars, man. This is the race to win in terms of just financial benefits. Dale Jarrett, last year's winner, has a ton of speed, guys. Oh, my God. He was so fast in the 125s, and we haven't got the race with Marlon yet. Here he is on the outside. I'm going to try to side draft him. There we go. Side draft him. Cut his run off. Go around him. Right now, we are in Monte Carlo in a sea of Fords and Dodges. New faces in new places. It's a brand new year, a brand new season. Points are on the line, guys. Points are on the line. Stewart, your last year's champion, start dead last in the 500. Stewart has the 500 curse for real. So, right now, man, we just got to take care of our equipment, man. Take care of the car, take care of the equipment. Don't try to win it on lap two. This is the Daytona 500. This is one when the sun is shining down. You know, that, that beautiful sunset, the roar of 43 stock car engines, howling the you know, amazing Daytona National Four facility. It's just a beautiful sight, guys. Mark Martin trying to get out here and lead, lead some laps, get some points. Oh, man. Go up high and block Martin. We've got to go down low and cut off Dale Jarrett. What a massive run after backing up the Sterling Marlins. Coors Light Dodge. Yates, Roush, Ganassi. A lot of different cats up here in the top five. Let's get a top five update and see who's in fifth. Uh, Ricky Run. So we've got the Wood Brothers trying to get another 500. Once again, Dale Jarrett is last year's champion of the Daytona 500. He is in second. A 20 lap race. We are going to try everything we can, guys, to win this race. I'm telling you, I'm trying everything. No tires, eight tires, four tires, whatever it takes. We're going to try to win this thing. The payout for this race is way too much to give up. Sterling Martin going way down low. Oh boy. He qualified second. So he's got some speed, but on the outside, car's going to get very loose. Here comes the 21 to the lead. Holy cow, man. That could have been really bad. They've got a big run on the inside. Ricky Rudd is going to lead this lap. Oh, my God. The car's such a tight spot there, man. You can barely get down. All right, so Ricky Rudd's out front. Trying to share, share draft with him a little bit. We're going to back up. To, see, there we go. Pull away. And we're going to just get a huge run on him with this draft. There we go. Huge run coming. Go high. We're going to try to cut down below him. Ain't going to work on that turn. It's 
stay behind him, hopefully. As long as he just doesn't pull away, which he might do. Just gotta get a run, man. Luckily, we got Kevin Harlan behind us, a fellow Monte Carlo. Trying to make some runs. Let's see if we can try to cut below him here. Oh, amazing run there. Look at that pass. Holy cow. Textbook pass for the lead at Daytona. That is just shades of the Gen 4 stock car era where you can just pull up high and just pull down low. Amazing run there. Oh, my God. I can't believe I pulled that one off, man. I cannot believe that. But Johnny Benson's in the mix today. He uh, missed out in the 2005 or 2500. Uh, thanks to Dale Jarrett passing him. Oh my goodness, man! This is <sighs> no pressure, guys. No pressure. It's not like we're racing in the biggest race of the year, and we're leading. Okay, fuel window, guys. Fuel window. So it looks like we're gonna be pitting at lap 10 around there. We're gonna be pitting with the second group of cars. I think that might be the best strategy to pit with the second group of cars instead of the first group. That worked in 03. Can it work in 04? And looks like Ricky Roy's going to get a push. We side draft him a little bit. Try to stall out his run. Oh my goodness, man. That Motorcraft Ford is fast, guys. He is fast. We have the inside line, but we don't have help. Here's Ryan Newman and Kevin Harvick. They're going to go around. Darn, man. Okay, they're pitting. We're gonna pit next time around. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Can we make it on one stop? That's the that's the the, the question. I can fix this, you know. Question in my mind. <laughs> that made no sense, anyways. So we're about seven. Or we run six laps, and we're about 25% left in the tank. The leaders are pulling away, so we are gonna have to try something different to keep up with them. Fronts when you are, but okay, they're pitting, so that means we're gonna pit and we're gonna take two. You're going to take two tires. That car ain't running much longer. You need fuel. We got some cars headed down pit road. Good clean pit stop. Uh, left sides. Full tank of gas. We'll take. I'm gonna take the left sides now. Full tank, no damage repair. Hopefully it works. If we can just save one second, I mean that that's a big difference in my opinion. We just gotta hang with the leaders, man. We just gotta hang with the leaders. We're just gonna take two this time, and we're gonna take none on the final stop. 11.5, not bad. That first pit stall right there is really helpful. We need to block Kevin Harvick. We need to keep these cats behind us. Our car in clean air and the arrow push behind us, it really, really is the difference because they're going to catch up to us, man. They are going to catch up. We're going to gamble. and we're, I think we're not even going to take tires on the last stop, guys. If, it, if I can save any time, I might just do that because we need to have some sort of gap between second place. Or leading again in the the big one, folks, the 500. And what's so cool about this game, which makes this game the greatest NASCAR game of all time, it's not my favorite one because nostalgia of 03, but the reason why this game is so amazing is the details, man. This is one, I think this is the only NASCAR game that ever had a trophy room. So every race you win, you can go into your trophy room and actually look at it. It is so cool. They actually made detailed trophies for every single race in this game. So if you win the 500, you win Atlanta Motor Speedway, whatever it may be, you actually have that that trophy in your case and you can look back on your racing resume with the amazing statistic engine in this game. And you can just truly document your NASCAR career. And that's why this game is just, it is the GOAT, man. It is the GOAT. Out front at Daytona, check our tire. I mean, we could still take just right side tires, because look at the gap we, we made with just taking two. I mean, they're gonna catch up to us, but we're still able to make that gap. And we pitted with the second group of cars, so that second group strategy is the, that's the right strategy. Pit with the second group, that's what we wanna do. 
and we're going to do that again next uh, time around. So we pitted a little earlier than I expected, but whatever it takes. I guess we couldn't have made it on, yeah, we could not have made it on one stop, one stop, because right now we'd have to pit, and look at, we're already a quarter into our tank, so no question, it is going to be a two-stop race, you can't just try to split it down the middle. Cars got speed, but they're catching up to us, man, they are catching up to us. We really got to keep focus, just keep digging. We need to try another tire strategy, uh, pit stop, and see if we can win this 500, man, see if we can win it. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to take no tires and just make sure we do not have a gamble. Because if we take two tires and they mess up, it's going to turn into a four-tire pit stop worth of time, and we're going to lose everything. If we gain a lot of time by taking two. Our right-side tires are going to be cooked, man. They are going to be cooked, but we don't have a choice. Now, question is, when is everyone going to pit? Is it going to be the earliest window? Is it going to be when, it, when it's 6 to go, 7 to go? Or is it going to be late in the run? Who knows? I imagine they're going to pit at the earliest opportunity with it being a two-stop race. Boy, Kevin Harvick is coming back up. He's got a fast Monte Carlo. He's definitely the fastest one uh, this week at Daytona. So we got to watch... Him, Ryan Newman at uh, Sterling Martin, very fast dodges. Uh, Johnny Benson, fast as Pontiac. Of course, uh, Ricky Rudd and Dale Jarrett have been the fastest forwards. We just need to block these guys. They're going too wide. If we can just keep these guys blocked, it'll be okay. I want to pit when they pit. Lap 12 out of 20 in the Daytona 500. This is the same difficulty level, too. I, this is legendary. Yes, I'm using assist, but that's because I'm not that good at these games. But it is minimal assists on career mode. You can't have full assists, so. Oh, man. This is crazy. If they keep going too wide, it's either going to be really good for us or really bad. Because if they go too wide and they both have an amazing push, they'll, one of them is going to get around me and then we're going to be screwed. But if they stay too wide, they might actually be slow enough that we can just keep blocking them like this. Because other cats, they're, they're gaining on us. I think it's Jarrett in uh, fourth, but he hasn't gained enough to be up there. I think he's bringing Mark Martin with him. Meanwhile, no one on pit road. But we're getting close in that fuel window, guys. There we go, low fuel. Final pit stops of the biggest race of the year, the biggest payout. I mean, I can just imagine what we could do with that money for this race team. So we just got to uh, stay cool, calm, and collected and uh, bring this one home. Hopefully we can get a good finish. We got cars on pit road right now, guys. Right now. So if these guys are going to be pulling to the right side or left side of the racetrack, we're going to pit. See what they do. They go to the left side. They're pitting. Let's see what they're doing. Let's see what they're doing. Let's see what they're doing. They're pitting. Oh boy. This is going to get crazy. So we're going to have to get extremely hot on pit road. We're going to take no tires. Gas tank's almost dry. Time to fill her up. The cars are pit. Got one outside. Stay focused. You can get the lead back. You're clear. I'm gonna take no tires. I'm not. I'm not risking it. I am not risking it. Oh, of course, Kevin Harvick. Really, Kevin Harvick. Really. Wow. Wow. Contact on pit road. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Go! 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 Nine point four. Go! Go! There we go. So we didn't need a full tank of gas, so we did come out ahead a little bit. But does Kevin Harvick have enough time to catch up to us? Because we're going to pull away a little bit on this uh, apron. No tires. That's why I did not want to take tires, guys. If we blow out the right front, so be it. I don't even care, man. 
I don't even care. If we blow out the tires, so be it. I've never had it happen in NASCAR game. If it happens, it just it wasn't meant to be. But if this car holds on, we could have just won the Daytona 500. But a caution could change everything right now. Anything could happen. I mean, the first practice session of the year, I, I, will, I kid you not, there was cars in the infield, on the apron, and on the racetrack on fire. Because the cars were just slowing down the racetrack and they were just crashing into them. It was like a huge AI glitch. It was demolition derby all over the racetrack. It was pretty exciting to watch, but we got to run these cats down, man. we got to run them down. Stay high in case anyone pulls in the racetrack. We don't want Kevin to page it. Can we catch these guys for the inner off the turn? Oh no. Come on, come on, come on. We have to catch them. We just got to get ahead of them, man. Okay, there we go. We have the lead in the Daytona 500. In the final stage of this race, the final few laps, guys. Can our right side tires hold, or is it going to be a disaster finish? I don't know, guys. Uh, we're on pins and needles over here. It's either the tires are going to hold... Or we're going to have what happened to Dale Earnhardt. We're going to have a crazy tire issue and just it's going to ruin our chance of the Daytona 500. Lap 17 out of 20. The biggest payout on the line. The biggest race. So much prestige. So much on the line here. Final few laps. There's nothing I can do to save the tires. It's full throttle around this place. And once they get up to me, it's going to be about the white flag. It'll be about two to one to go. And they're going to be right on our tail. And we're going to have to block the last bit of the race on old tires. I mean, honestly, we might have should have took right sides earlier on. Just because our left sides don't degrade as much. That probably would have been the smarter strategy. But we can't do anything about it. You know, We were very aggressive on pit road. And if we weren't, we would have lost enough time to be second place. Meanwhile, it's last year's 500 champion, Dell Jarrett in second, and Mark Martin in third trying to get his first 500. Lap 18 out of 20. These cats are going to be on us, and this looks like this is the three players for this year's 500. A caution would end the race right now, so let's hope and pray a caution happens. I hope it ain't us. Dell Jarrett with a massive run. We have to block him at all costs. As soon as he passes us, he's going to win this race. So we have to block him at all costs. Car's extremely loose. Oh my god. We're washing up the racetrack. No, Jarrett. No, dang it, man. That's that tire wear right there. That just cost us the 500 right there, guys. I don't know. I have never had the tires that that loose at Daytona. Never in my life have I ever had that loose. Only on NASCAR or 6. Tires are so loose, man. They can't even keep a straight line. Well, Dale Jarrett's going to win the 500 two years in a row. We blew our shot, but it wasn't our fault. You know, I can't do anything about it when the car is that loose. I, I can't. It's just the car is just extremely loose. It's wrecking speed to be that loose. So, I uh, can't do nothing about it, guys, but we can still come away with a solid finish. It's not the win, but hey. Good, good effort for the entire team. We have been the fastest car all speed weeks long. We qualified on pole. We led the most laps. We won the 125. We won the Bud Shootout. I mean, this is the only race we did not win this weekend. That's okay with me. We can come away with the top five. We can hold on to this thing for one more corner. This car is extremely fragile, so let's just hold on to it and uh, pull this thing home. We wash up, we're going to lose six spots. So it's all depending on this one corner, and there's going to be pressure on us. So we're just going to have to just ride this corner. Our stream loose. We get third. It's okay. I'll, I'll take third, man. Third with extremely worn tires. I will take it. Huge gamble, and it's going to match our best finish. Third place in the Daytona 500. Dale Jarrett gets his second straight 500 win. Whew. Man, my foot is numb. Wow. You know, that's pretty amazing.
What a race, guys. I mean, I cannot believe how amazing this race was. Look at the bank we brought home. $207,000 sponsor income. $15,000 in awards, which was probably for the pole and most laps led. $986,000 race winnings. We're at a $1.5 million bank. Wow. This was exactly what we needed. Holy cow, guys. What a finish, guys. I mean, absolutely what a finish. I, I just, I cannot believe it. So we are now second in points. I mean, just, just an amazing, amazing race. We led how many laps? Or we don't, we can't even see. I, I can't believe it, guys. What a race. I, I'm just blown away. What is the awards? So we led... So we didn't lead the most laps. On, yeah, or we did. We got front row. We led the most laps and the pole awards. That's an extra 15K for nothing. Wow. What an amazing race, guys. So I'm going to include this uh, video here. Third place in the Daytona 500. Won the 125. Won the shootout. Fastest car all week long. Qualified on pole. A amazing week for this small, small Chevrolet team from Texas. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new around here, smash that subscribe button. Thank you. Thank you so much.